Hey guys, I hope this message finds you well. I hope you guys are staying home, staying healthy and safe, and it's gonna pass, and I really hope it hasn't really affected you in, in a uh, tragic way, and if it has, um, I send all the positive energy vibes and uh, going to you and your families right now, but thank you for continuing to listen to the podcast, and if you wanna share it, instead of sharing germs, just go ahead and uh, click that button. It's about growing as a person. Your best is completely unique to you. Hey, uh, everyone. Welcome to episode whatever the fuck it is right now. I don't remember. Uh, uh, fuck perfect. I'm here with a uh, longtime friend, uh, Juliet. Well, Juliet Forte. Do you want to go? That's the name you're going yeah, that's by? that's cool. Yeah, cool. yeah. Um, do you want to give a little uh, cherry-picked version of your bio of how you got here? Oh, right. I'm, you did tell me I was supposed to say this. Um, so <laughs> am I supposed to say my life story now? Any sort of, as long uh, as it's rehearsed I, and memorized. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, first, uh, I've known Jeff since high school yep. and, um, we were in the drama department. We were in, yeah, we were the geeky theater crowd and it was great. Um, and uh, since then, I guess we both have done a lot of random things. We're both very into health. Um, as far as me, I uh, went to UCLA, got my degree in women's studies, which is like feminist studies. Um, which I actually kind of regret that degree a little bit now because I think it's been turned into a mockery with what's going on with uh, the current feminist movement, but that might be a digression. Um, I uh, then ironically posed for Playboy, so I'm known as Playboy's feminist playmate, at least um, uh, before everyone was, before it was fashionable for everyone to be a feminist. Uh, and then um, I have, yeah, I've been in and out of the entertainment industry. I didn't like LA. I quickly moved back to the Bay Area because I didn't, I mean, I liked LA, but I didn't like LA. And so I, I went back to the Bay Area, sort of got stuck there, um, ended up um, marrying the wrong guy for a while, um, and that's unfortunate, but a learning experience, and working a lot of jobs I despised, and um, really missing the entertainment industry, and not having a lot of time for my creative um, pursuits, um, and then a few years ago, I uh, made a life transition, uh, left that marriage um, amicably, and uh, worked more on my writing, and um, since then, I've published a few short stories in some uh, some online outlets like Huff Post and National Lampoon. Um, but before that, I would publish a lot of uh, more like social political type articles for Huff Post. Um, a lot of which are not even um, online anymore because they they're old and they're archived. And um, but yeah, so then um, I, as of the last couple of years, have been a stay at home mom after finding the man of my dreams and. Uh, and I love it. I'm like a 1950s housewife and I'm still trying to, you know, do my creative thing on the side, which has been a struggle. Um, but uh, I'm still uh, working to share my unsolicited opinions with the world. So mm -hmm. um, there, I think you have it mostly. <laughs> mostly. Yeah. yeah I, I love the, I saw your website with the unsolicited opinions and I think it's hilarious, especially as a parent, you, you probably get this now more than ever without you even asking. <laughs> People were just like, here's, here's what you should be doing. And I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you're the same way. I'm ultra sensitive to the word should. I'm like, cause I hate the word should. I hate it. Cause it's a, it's a judgmental fucking word. Yeah, it, it kind of is. Cause you're like, oh, you know what you should do? I'm like, oh, please, please tell me what I should be doing. You know? Uh, and what about the manipulative of you might want to consider. Right, right, right. See, that might I'm be fine better. With that. I'm fine yeah. with that. Cause I, that's still my choice. Right. Yeah. It's still my choice of like, you might want to consider this. Have you, have you thought about that? And they're like, no, no, no. I don't care about your choice. You should be doing this. Like, oh, like I, I just like, it's or my for trigger people that word. don't have children, right? What's that? Maybe are, are these from other parents or from other, from people who don't have any kids? Oh, it could be, it could be from, from any, uh, any, any group. I think it's particularly people who do have parents who, who think that their way is the only way because it worked for that kid. It's, so it'll work for every other kid. <laughs> yeah, so. I mean, all kids are really different. Although I must say, I really do. I know that I am a, a know-it-all type of person and very mm. controlling. So because I'm aware of that, I often am much better now before I just in you know try to tell people how they should do run their lives. I at least say, hey, 
would you like to hear, <laughs> would you even like to hear this? You know, and if they say yes, I'm like, okay, you know, yeah. and then I'll like launch forward. But <laughs> yeah. like now I at least say, hey, do you want an opinion? Yeah, it's almost, like, it's almost like a crossroads demon. Like, do you agree to hear all the shit that I have to say first? <laughs> all right, here it goes. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Because, you know, sometimes even when your friends call you up and they're bitching and moaning about their lives and their boyfriends or whatever, it's like, are you bitching about your boyfriend because you want me to tell you to leave him? Or do you want me to just listen and agree with the fact that you're stupid enough to stay with him? Or what, what do you want me to say, right? You know, and then you have to just... The old me would just launch in and be like, da, 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 da. but now the new me is like, do you want to know what I have to that say? That is so eerie because that's exactly what I have been kind of shifting to. Because again, the old me is like, do you do you want the uh, a solution to your problem or suggestion, or do am I supposed to listen? And now I'm like, okay, I'm going to ask first. Because yeah, and I think that's because I've had it blow up in my face quite a bit because I'm pretty harsh, you know. <laughs> um, so so I've become a lot more sensitive to the fact that I can be harsh. Yeah. I think the awareness is key, right? Absolutely, uh, absolutely. People that that might be listening to this that know me will probably be like, yeah, Jeff's Jeff's kind of harsh sometimes. <laughs> So uh, I guess like the whole, like, it's kind of good to have, I mean, when you have a lot of unsolicited opinions, mm -hmm. um, then it's, it's better to just, I mean, maybe having an outlet like a YouTube channel or a podcast enables you to be less of an asshole in true life because it's like you get out your sort of like ammo in front of the um, camera. And then if someone really wants to listen to your opinion, they can go watch your videos. And at least you've sure. already said your piece. And now exactly. you could be a little bit tamer in real life with everyone else that you're, that you care about. And because, Hey, you know, if they really want to know your, your opinion on abortion, they can go watch this video right? <laughs> Click here, <laughs> <laughs> or something. Right. Yeah. But, and then the benefit of a, of, of a podcast or a video like this on YouTube is that the viewer is like out of the hot seat because they think the conversation isn't involving them, but I, but we secretly are talking to them, but it's not looking at them. I mean, maybe I'm looking at them right now because I'm looking at Yeah, the you're definitely looking at them. <laughs> to make you uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. It'll be is, my, is my voice coming across okay here? Oh, is it's it? great. Okay. It's, okay. it's super uh, feminist. So. Oh, no, I don't, li I don't really even like that word anymore, man. <laughs> like, but, you know, hey, um, that's definitely another topic. Probably You want to talk about health and stuff, right? Like, <laughs> no, no, I, no. I, I, eventually, right. maybe. I mean, I, okay. the whole, the whole thing, even about fuck perfect, I was even thinking, I got to have like this best background. I got to have the, 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 the awesome can. And I, and I started thinking like, man, I'm just, I'm overthinking this. I just need to start doing it no matter how shitty it starts off as, as it is. And, uh, and like, I don't even care about anything, how it goes now, as long as like, here's the name of the episode. I'll ask a couple of questions. We'll see what happens. Um, like with George, Jor I was talking to Jordan Syatt a few episodes ago, who is uh, kind of a fitness celebrity or fitness influencer. Mm -hmm. We have talking a lot about, I asked him most about Harry Potter uh, a lot. And that's where that kind of, that kind of where that interview was, but it was great. It was fun. And so the one of the things I want to tell uh, everyone and, and yourself is I know I've told you before, like seriously like if you were such a huge influence on me um really? especially i mean if back in high school i know like i think for me i felt like there was a rivalry between us in and acting like a like a a friendly competition rivalry really tell me more uh i just felt like oh like if if juliet's going to try to do this monologue i'm going to try and try and do one in, in, of equal stature or importance or emotion or something kind of this competitive thing and i remember even doing that that horror I, mean, I don't think i could ever forget that horrible scene that we did where i'm like blindfolded because no one wanted to do it and it's like i'll do it and then you like i had blindfolded and you were like um uh, was it what was that i forgot that what it was called this, uh anyways it doesn't matter one of the really early thing really it was early a, it, scenes huh yeah, it was, it was a movie with, I think, Farrah Fawcett or something like that. Uh, and uh, Extremities. Ex Extremities is what it was called. Holy shit. My memory is good. So anyways, um, but like when I, would, when I would see you, like you have a confused face a lot. And not a lot, but often in class or something like that. I'm like, oh, she's confused. 
then you'd always ask questions. And then you'd always like you, you, I saw you studying all the time. And I remember you telling me, I don't even know the, the exact quote, because I, I don't know the percentage, but the idea was like 90, what, 8% perspiration or 99% perspiration. Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration by Thomas Edison, who supposedly hijacked that from someone else. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, that quote stuck with me. I was like, okay, so if you just work hard, you can basically overcome everything. And the amazing thing about that is now what I know about with growth mindset by this author, Carol Dweck, who is like a Stanford professor who studies mindset, the idea of the tortoise and the hare, the hare being the one with talent, but the tortoise being one with work, work ethic, right? Uh, the consistency will always win. But then if you ever have like both combo, it's like, that'd be, like that'd be ideal. Fucking yeah. jackpot. But anyways, like see, seeing kind of your, your journey from afar being uh, so this studious student and then UCLA and then obviously the Playboy thing and you have the, I, I'm actually really interested, interested in your art as well and your writing because it's still kind of, kind of the Juliet artist. I remember you making jewelry back in high school, right? So. Yeah, I was uh, always working on something. <laughs> always, always working on something. And I, I just think it's, you're very, very talented and you have a, just you. so much, uh, so, uh, such a great work ethic. You know, and it's very, it's, it's at least 1% inspirational. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, I definitely am a little bit obsessive when it comes to anything I've decided to work on. Um, mm -hmm. So I appreciate that. And it's interesting. I find myself in a similar boat where if I choose to work on something, I get obsessed about it. And then as a know-it-all thing, the comment on that, I don't really talk about anything I don't know. So when people are having a conversation, if they're talking about, say, football or just something I'm just not so familiar with, I'm quiet. But then when I, they do bring up something I know about, it's just, <laughs> they're like, you don't know it all. I'm like, well, I only talk about what I know. Otherwise, I'm like, I don't know. So it seems like I'm quiet and then, blah. Oh, interesting. You know, um, it's, it, you're good for, you know, being quiet and, and more thoughtful and listening when you're not sure what is being discussed. I think some bad habits of mine have been like, I'll know a little bit about a topic, but because I speak so confidently, people assume that I'm right when I'm talking about something really confidently. And, um, uh, that I've, I think is probably not the best way to go. Like I'll just you know, I'll speak like I'm a professor about topics I know like 50% about. And then everyone thinks I know everything and that I'm, what I'm saying is true. And at the time I think it's true because I've gotten carried away, but this is kind of, <laughs> this, this is, this is something I probably used to do more when I was younger. And now I'm more often likely to say, Hey, um, I actually don't know the answer to that question, but here's an idea of what I think it might be. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like what you and I discuss. It's sort of a, do you want my opinion or not? And if you do, it's probably not necessarily true, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's all these disclaimers, really. Absolutely. I'll, I have, a, I've had a friend even talk to me about, I'm not sure if we recorded this before or started talking before. I had a friend talk to me about like blah, blah, blah. And his life is just so horrible. And I said, okay, well, what are you going to do about it? And he goes, well, I, I have this problem. Okay, but what do you what do you want? To, what are you gonna do about it? And it's just like when I ask that question for people who are just if I if I get the sense they're just kind of bitching about something, uh, they either stop it <laughs> because they don't know what to do about it, and and they realize or maybe sometimes they even realize that they don't even want to talk about the solution. That they, just, that they just want to like have you know misery wants company right <laughs> like that sucks what do you want to do about it and it's just like shuts the conversation down <laughs> i think also it's not even just that misery wants company people just want to feel righteous you know people True. feel powerless they feel dumb they feel incompetent and so if they can bitch about something it elevates them above that thing Mm -hmm. And so if oh, they can yeah. be righteous above something, it kind of gives them a little bit of self-worth for a second. It's a terrible way to achieve that. But I feel like that's why people sometimes bitch about things. Cause it's like, if that thing actually went away, then they'd have nothing to be better than. 
right? You know, this is a, it's a really good parallel to, to jump right into the fitness health thing right there okay. because what I notice a lot is people do that for the thing that's trending right now or whatever, whenever people listen to this, whenever it's trend, whatever's trending, it's the idea like, oh, well, yeah, that thing didn't work for me. You know, it's not, it's not my fault. It's not, it's not that I didn't do it long enough consistently every day. And then I, I didn't go in the corner and sneak some ice cream and some cupcakes. Like, no, 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 that doesn't work for me. So the whole fit, health and fitness industry has, is capitalizing on the fact that you don't want to take responsibility. And they're like, well, obviously you did the other thing didn't work in 2018, but now this thing in 2020, you got to buy this. It's only a $5,000 Peloton bike, you know? It's like, oh, that's going to keep me accountable. <laughs> well, <laughs> I hope it does. You make you know? a very good point. The biggest problem is that people want to blame anyone but themselves for everything, True. not just not their bodies, that's um, their lives. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now, there, now there's this movement, um, the fat acceptance movement, which I feel mm -hmm. is very ambivalent. At what least, I think it started out with good intentions, but it's become really mm -hmm. problematic and very unhealthy. You know, um, I agree. I mean, I think it started out really within the, unfortunately, it's the feminist movement. I think it's where it started. Um, it's like, oh, you know, let's love all women's bodies, you know, and body types and shapes. And I think that's all very good. Um, but we didn't mean, I think, at least the original intention was, we're not supposed to celebrate unhealthy morbid obesity. You know, we're supposed to celebrate the fact that there's a range of beauty and we want to celebrate the healthy range of beauty and the healthy range of beauty there's a reason why, you know, people are attracted to a certain body type. It's mm -hmm. because it signifies health and reproductive vitality. There's a reason why women have hourglass figures. We store DHA in our butts and hips. And if you don't have an hourglass figure or not a very good one, you might not have a correct distribution of DHA in your body, which might signal to the male that you aren't harboring enough baby brain fats for conception. I mean, science is discovering all of this stuff. And a lot of these movements simply ignore science. Um, so, and now it's kind of like, it's so yes, let's celebrate beauty in all forms, but now it's like gotten to this point of like, oh, well let's, morbid obesity is good. And you know, don't, I'm a victim because I'm, I've made these horrible de decisions for my body. And, um, and now doctors are even being persecuted for telling these people the truth about their health. Um, and no one wants to take responsibility. They'd rather like uh, there's now um, at some universities are starting like a fat studies program um, so mm. that people can you know claim victim status instead of actually working through their obesity. Um, so some shit can get out of control like that, you know? Absolutely. I think a lot of uh, recently society has become uh, aware of finding how their problems make them significant. So they're like, okay, I've got, so I, so my person, I don't think anyone knows this yet, but my personal thing is I think last year I went to a, a different kind of therapist and called the EMDR therapist that helps well, with like EMDR. PTSD and anxiety. Mm -hmm. I never thought I had anxiety, but apparently I did. And I didn't really talk about it because everyone else was fucking talking about it enough. I didn't want to add any more shit to the, to the, <laughs> to the pool. And so I did it because I was I would have this type of worrying where I would kind of catastrophize. Cata I don't know how to catastrophize. Is that a word? That yeah, sure. I would, I would I would make it the worst case scenario. Final destination was the worst thing I ever saw as a movie because it was like, oh, you could die that way and that way and that way and that way, uh, and it could happen at any point. So yeah, I would do this worst case scenario stuff all the time. So it's a form of anxiety. I went to EMDR. Boom! It was amazing. It was it was so great. Um, and so I noticed like, everyone's like, oh yeah, we have, uh, my anxiety's acting up today. I'm getting whatever. Uh, or they say, oh man, I, I have the health issues or the, the, the fat, the embracing your fat body. Everyone's trying to find. You're going to love yourself no matter what. Yeah. That's and I think, I think it's important to, to love yourself and also want to grow and be better. Yeah. And uh, the way you love yourself is trying to help yourself be the most enjoyable version of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the idea where fuck perfect comes from is people are seeking this perfection. Like I'm not perfect. I don't have the perfect body. I don't look the perfect way. I, I don't, I don't have the perfect mental health or I don't have the perfect financial set. And they're always like trying to get this, what the fuck is perfect? Like 
we are perfect already. It just stops chasing it. Like the idea is like you're good with who you are, like inside, right? And now you can still grow and become better uh, and not just be like, well, I couldn't lose the weight. So this is who I am. You know, that's, well, it's not, you don't have to accept, say, uh, the lack of health or pain or mediocrity or being average. People have kind of like just found these ways to amplify their significance through their problems. And have you ever heard of the yeah, but exercise? No, it sounds familiar. Um, I think what you're talking about is that it's very fashionable to be a victim right now. Absolutely. It's absolutely, it's absolutely right. I mean, like, so the exercise would be like, what do you want on the left of this paper? Like, what are your goals? What are your dreams? What are your hopes, desires, whatever that is. On the other side of the piece of paper, you write all the reasons you can't have it. And now you choose what side of the piece of paper you want to live on. And there might be some legitimate things, right? There might be some legitimate reasons, but for the most part, yeah, but I don't have it because of this, right? So you, you figure out what you are. So everyone's kind of playing that victim card. Everyone's trying to find how they can be the next victim, right? Uh, yeah. Like the Peloton bike ad, which I think I talked on my first episode. If Emily gave me a Peloton bike, and I don't really want one, but if I got one, I'd be like, whoa, this is fucking cool. Like, I don't need to lose weight, but this is another way that I can get my workout in and feel like a badass. So the girl that was like criticizing the ad, right? She didn't need to lose any weight, but that's not what it's about. It's just another tool. Yeah, another tool. Anyways, totally off topic. Quick question for you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) First question. Second, maybe. The, so where in, what story do you want to like share about, did you seek perfection in? And then you sort of like said, fuck it, I'm not going for perfection anymore. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. Um, Well, having been in and out of the entertainment industry and um, for a few years making money exclusively off of my appearance, that made me very self-conscious. And it also made me very good at looking good um, during that time. Like I started to get really good at doing my hair and makeup, um, uh, really great at knowing like my different camera angles. So if people were to take pictures of me at events, like I could minimize the amount of shitty photos that made it onto the internet because to some extent, like, you know, when people take a lot of pictures of you, there's bound to be something awful. Like there's, you know, you're going to take bad pictures. So I always found ways to minimize it. And I, you know, for a time, this is just some background for you. Um, I wouldn't do events. Like if I gained like too much weight in my own opinion, I would turn down events. So I wouldn't go out in public and be seen in public and be photographed. So that was a little extreme. Um, like I would, I would turn down some signings and stuff, which would have been good money. I didn't do this too, too often. Uh, mo- most of the time I policed myself, but um, uh, I guess that has radically changed over time. Like the more time I've spent out of the entertainment industry directly, now I've always loosely been connected to it. So even if it's only like I'm doing like signings remotely, um, I mean, to some extent I'm still loosely con- connected, but, but having my experience largely be out of the entertainment industry every year, every month, you know, I'm out, like, it's sort of more of a detox. Um, And there's a lot I love about it. But I think being in that industry reinforces a lot of unnecessary self consciousness, but also gives you some interesting tools for, you know, presenting the artistic project that is yourself forward. Um, And so uh, I think having a kid finally, I mean, I've always been a vain bastard, let's face it. Um, And I think the entertainment industry made it worse in some, like I said, there's pros and cons to that. And, um, and then once I had my baby, um, I wanted to continue to be creative and I didn't have a lot of time for writing. So I thought, well, how can I communicate with the world? And um, when I started my YouTube channel, um, I completely did the opposite of what I normally do. Like, like before I would turn down jobs if I was not, if I had gained five to seven pounds, you know, I would show up looking immaculate and immaculate makeup and hair. Um, but now I turned on the camera for anyone in the world to see, and I would have no makeup on and I was gaining, carrying an extra 20 pounds from pregnancy. And I thought, and, and it wore like aura had like smeared makeup from the day, you know, in fact, I've had some of my own YouTube video. Uh, well, I shouldn't call them my own. They're not my own. I've had some of, some of the YouTube viewers on my channel. A lot of them are, are hateful men that don't like some of my videos. Um, 
but you know, like comment on how my makeup looks like shit and how my hair looks like shit. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. Um, and it's because I didn't care enough. Um, I guess I just decided to like, kind of like, you know, this whole idea of fuck perfect. Like if, if I had to wait at this point in my life for every, for me to have the, the exact like leanness that I wanted, the, the hairdo I wanted and the makeup I wanted, like if I had to have everything perfect so I could film a YouTube video, I would, I would hardly ever film a YouTube video if I was mm -hmm. that tight ass about everything. So I just had to take, to me, it was a risk. I was like, all right, well, I guess um, I'll just look on, not very good <laughs> on camera and, and that will, you know, maybe be a good experience for me. And I just, I did it and, um, and I kept doing it and I didn't really care that much. And I cared less and less as I went. And now I'm just kind of sitting in front of you um, with really, I didn't put too much artifice. I mean, I still love the idea of dressing up and looking good. I just don't have any time. So I, I fear I might as well do something. Um, it's better than nothing. And if I don't look sure. like a pinup model exactly, um, then that's okay. And um, I feel like uh, I actually like the authenticity more. Um, I'm not as self-conscious. I'm more likely to tell uh, the truth. And when I say tell the truth, not to say I would, I would have lied before, but I feel like if I'm going to present a more authentic face, I'm going to just be a little more raw in my speech, um, which is good, I think. I think people need to hear more authentic truth. Um, it's kind of a long-winded answer to your question, but I think it was just the transition from the entertainment industry to filming my own videos and having no time and being a mom and being like, well, oh, well, okay, whatever. You know, I'll just eat it. And if people want to make fun of my appearance, like, oh, well, that's... It's, you know, and to be, to be honest, Jeff, like, even when I looked like pretty polished, I had people, there was once a message form that said that I should, uh, wear a paper bag over my head, that I had a nice body, but an ugly face. And it's like, there's no pleasing these people, you know? So it's like, yeah. eh, you and know, it, absolutely. And I think, um, you said the tag on something you said about something's better than nothing. I think you're referring to makeup, right? But so, or, or just or just like producing content that sure. isn't perfect, yeah it applies you know? it applies in so many ways where people will be on a, on a new, uh, fitness program or a nutrition pro or a combination of both and they think everything's perfect on january 1st and then two weeks in they're like man i had this cheat meal i'm a fucking horrible person i'm never gonna do this they don't i like to call the wtf plan like when things fail and it's like if you don't have that that kind of mindset like things are going to happen life's going to happen as long as you did something you get back on track you just kind of try to course correct as opposed to like yeah this is it three weeks in i could i couldn't do perfect you know you go from like these drastic changes uh not to get i don't want to get talk about diet too much but people like change, change their diet so drastically have these huge perfect expectations of how things are, should go but on the internet my my kind of philosophy is that it's the angry mob. And I think that big influencers that can remain authentic can with, like you were talking about, can withstand the, uh, the angry mob. And there's a, a lot of people out there talking about the idea of other people's praise. Like you want, you can't actually take pray, like be a, a praise whore or a praise monster and then not have the negative shit so if you if you really want the praise you got to take the negative or you cut them both off and now you can be authentic right because now you don't need the praise because you have self-love you don't need you don't care about the negative shit yeah. because with you have like these massive influencers who are not authentic they become a, a form of a prostitute to the angry mob because they're what what do they have to do to get their attention and they're constantly trying to top themselves and they'll give in to whatever the angry mob of the internet wants so no matter what you do it's going to be the percentage of angry people no matter what right if you're yeah well there's no pleasing everyone and mm -hmm. and to to kind of bounce off of your point about the praise versus the um the opposite end of that spectrum if you're if you're too flattered by praise you're also torn apart by criticism mm -hmm. so i guess um to kind of go off onto a quick tangent for two seconds or ten 
Um, <laughs> yeah, um, you, I guess I've been exposed to a lot of vile shit aimed at me just be by virtue of my involvement with Playboy. And then mo more recently, some of the videos I've made on my own tiny channel that I, you know, it's a small channel right now. Um, but I've had a lot of experience, you know, reading hateful stuff about myself and it sucked a lot at the time, but it kind of like hardened me a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, and now that I've seen a lot of vile stuff being written again under my videos and I don't want to discourage public discourse. So I haven't been disabled the comments on some of them. I just don't read them anymore. I mean, I used to read them because they were kind of appreciative and good natured. I had a core group of people that constantly commented on my videos and, I liked sure. interacting with them and thought, well, maybe my videos are giving them some kind of value. And now there's just so much junk, so many horrible things written by people who have nothing better to do that it's, it's, it's poisonous. And so. And um, you know, honestly, I feel bad for them too. I start, I started to feel bad for, for the, the haters and the trolls that would kind of even come after me. I didn't, I don't really have a whole lot. Not but, yet. Yeah, I know. Just yet. wait. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I've had, I've had a, you know, pretty, pretty nasty one recently where they talked about me and my kids and I never even talked to this person before. I don't even post my kids on social media. So yeah, you know, I shut down my show, social media to the public because I saw that a lot of my YouTube traffic was headed there. And so I yeah, shut yeah, 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 yeah. I've made it private. Yeah. 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 So I, and I've been really conscious about like, if, if I do show pictures of the kids, it's usually the back of the backs of their heads and stuff like that. And, um, but but yeah, like I, uh, I I feel bad. I feel bad for the for the bully. I feel bad for the people who are just they they feel like they need to lash out. And the other thing too is I think social media is. I mean, the internet's always been the the place where the the angry trolls have been. And now like society's kind of visiting this land of internet world and like oh my god, there's so many angry trolls. And then they're converting people while they're they're there. Is the uh, the like say YouTube and Facebook specifically, like whenever you post something or make something, they're encouraging you to give your judgment. Do you like it? Do you heart it? Do you cry? Do you angry it? Do you thumbs up? Do you thumbs down? What is your judgment of this content? And so the social media is constantly pulling out like, hey, what's your judgment? Hey, what's your judgment? Judge it, judge it, judge it. And it reminds, it reminds me of that. This is off topic. Reminds me of that website back like in 2001, like hottornot.com. Oh, <laughs> like, wow. Judge I, me, yeah. judge me, judge me. And Ooh, it's like, it's but now easy. people, now people are so used to giving their judgment without even think it's like, it's usually negative, right? So it's, it, it's an interesting time. It's kind of, kind of sucky. Yeah, if you, if you engage it, you have to engage it with a thick skin. And if um, that's, it's, you just make a choice. It's like engage the criticism and the um, praise with, a, with just a, a grain of salt mm. or just don't. And right. I'm better off right now just not because even though I have a thicker skin from mm. all those years of exposure to hateful random crap from people, um, it's still a poisonous to read because you know, our minds are like sponges. And if you read negative things over and over again, like you can actually create neural pathways in your brain, even if it's absolutely, a, it's, it's a belief system you don't even believe in, but your brain reads it over and over and over again and starts to like create belief systems out of it, even sure, if it, sure. it's your will. So it's kind of like, you know, you're going to be brainwashed by the world if you don't brainwash yourself first. I mean, like, that's a fact. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. how old you are, like, so that I'm very careful about the TV I watch or not, um, or the, you know, podcasts or music I listen to, because, you know, we're getting sensory inputs from all these different places. And if you're not critically, actively deciding what those inputs are, you are going to be passively brainwashed by whatever they want you to be and believe. So I try not to expose myself to too much bad news. I mean, like the, the list goes on. Um, I mean, again, it's like it's very, brain watch yourself first before they do. Are yeah, hearing, I really... By the way, and what's that? Coming, are you hearing some weird squeaky noise on your side? No, sometimes maybe. What the hell is going on in this new house? <laughs> are you going to edit this video later? <laughs> I hope not. I really hope I don't. I had edited a lot of them. <laughs> uh, one of them. Junk. That's <laughs> like these noises. Um, anyway. No, it's 
it's really, I like the way you really say that you got to brainwash yourself and, and be intentional because a lot of times everyone is so reactive these days. They're reactive to their health. They're rea- reactive to a problem. They're reactive to what they hear. You see elections changed via Facebook ads, right? And it's like, everyone's so reactive. They only read headlines. They're not actually reading articles or anything or where things are coming from as opposed to being proactive, like, hey, before something's a problem, let me, uh, let me not get my, my weight, like not, not become overweight. I'm gonna fix this problem before it becomes a problem. Everyone's just constantly like basically almost drowning. They're just like staying afloat, right? And they're just reactive to all these problems. But if they were proactive more, especially with the inputs they put in front of their head, it'll change your focus. It's like if you were to get a new car, and I tell this example a lot, you start to see that car everywhere. You're like, whoa. And it wasn't that everyone just bought the fucking car, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, okay, what are, you, what are you training your brain to see? If you're training your brain to see this new car you bought, you're going to see it everywhere. If you train your brain to see the good or the, the intentional input that you were talking about, you're going to start seeing that everywhere. But everyone's trained to see this, the the negative, the bullshit, the lies, the, the fake news, the blah, 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 all this crap, right? So then they're always seeing more of it. Yeah. So you said, you said treading water. And to add to that, I feel like happiness is treading water. You know, it takes, there's, there's hardly anyone in, in this world other than children that are naturally just happy without, mm-hmm. tr- you know, sort of training themselves to be you know, talking themselves into it. Or maybe it's because I'm this dark writer person, but um, I feel like you have to constantly talk to yourself. You have to constantly talk yourself into being content and joyful and doing the things that reinforce that joy and happiness. I feel like it is like treading water because life is hard. Life is really hard. And if you don't fricking keep trying to find the light, you know, it's easy to sink really easy. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And it's, because it takes like whether it's fitness or health or mental health or happiness it's a choice and then you have to be able to back that choice up with truth right because if you don't believe you're happy you're not gonna be like haha you know i'm not sure if you ever got this but people like i have so i have this so here let me show you this is my (laughs) i can't do enough this is my face this is my face all right this is me resting face People no resting like, bitch face, at least. Yes. People are like, you, sh- you should smile. I'm like, oh, really? I should? They're like, well, you used to act. Why don't you just act happy? Okay. <laughs> like, you can't just act happy. Like, it's a different thing. And so uh, it, it always drives me crazy. But the reason that I bring it up is you can't, you can't be happy without the truth. You can't back it up. If you don't believe it, you're not. You're just going to be like this fake smiley thing be really torn up inside um happiness almost for me and that's the idea of the idea of fuck perfect when you're seeking perfection you're gonna be in a state of pain because you're never going to get there but if you're seeking progress then it's almost like there's a flip of pain to to gratitude like hey i am making progress i do feel good because this is true there's a truth there and now you're starting to go for happiness. And there's this really cool book by Sean Acor called The Happiness Advantage, where he talks about how he studies, like, I guess, happiness at, at, um, at Harvard. And the idea is that people think hard work plus, plus success equals happiness. And he is, and other uh, professors and people who study the scientists, happiness scientists, have proved the reverse is true. Happiness plus hard work equals success, right? So it's like, okay, are you happy with what you do? And are you gonna apply effort into it? Like a lot of effort? Boom, now you're successful. You think about all like the success stories in whatever they are, whether it's sports or act, acting or anything like that. People usually love what they do so they can put so much more work into it. Mm. And achieve Not success. be tired. Not be tired, right? And so <laughs> maybe, <laughs> and that's the other thing too. I realized I was not getting enough sleep as a parent. So 
Oh, really? I can't imagine that. I thought I could just do. I thought this is what it was. And I had to be, I had to be tired all the time. Now that I'm getting like eight and eight and a half hours of sleep every night. You're actually eight hours? My God. I have to go to bed so early, Julia. Like I, I go to bed in 30 minutes. I go to bed. Can't uh, keep it too long then, eh? No, no, you're good. You're good. Okay. I wouldn't, would have agreed. But so what, like, in, to, to, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> but in, I'm jealous. In, like I, that's, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm trying. My Fitbit yeah. says definitely under my goals um, for sleep. Good for you, man. I like, uh, I like the Whoop band. Thank you very much. I like the Whoop band more than anything else. And the reason I, the reason I chose Whoop to begin with, I went from a Fitbit to a Whoop. I was like, well, I don't want anything. I don't want a screen. I don't want a notification. I don't want nothing to interact. I don't want. I don't want to become a zombie to any any company that says I need to interact with my watch instead of my phone. Um, so I got the Whoop because the Whoop tracks recovery better than any other uh, wearable, mm. and it tracks fitness too. But it tracks recovery in a way that no other device does track recovery. So it tracks your sleep. It tracks something called your HRV rating, which HRV stands for heart rate variability, the variability where your heart changes when it's at its lowest, say sleep, and its highest, say intense exercise. And if you look up HRV, scientists do not know uh, what piece of the pie, like what percentage it is, but they can tell you that it's your sleep, it's your emotions, it's your gratitude, it's your nutrition, it's your stress level. If the, and they know all of that, but they just don't know what is what. So they say, just aim for all of them. <laughs> and, you'll, and I've slowly been able to increase my HRV rating, measuring it with the whoop. And I'm like, shit, I'm not waking up. I, don't, I do not, I've never been a morning person. I told you I started doing fitness classes. I wake up at like six in the morning now to go do these fitness classes, which I never thought I would ever do in my life. I do not wake up out of bed going, oh my God, I feel amazing. Uh, but after about three to five minutes, I'm like, I'm good. So there's a, there's a transition where like, I don't want to get up. <laughs> and then I'm, then I'm good. And I just feel good. And that, I haven't had that since, you know, before kids. So Good for you. I like, I like the whoop. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So in, in maybe that's the topic. I mean, your health, is there an area that you sought perfection? I mean, it's kind of, kind of, kind of overlaps with what you're talking about before in terms of weight loss and, uh, and not wanting to go out, but is there any other area in your health that you sought perfection or you're like, Matt? Yeah. Um, I'd say, um, you know, I've, I've actually been an alternative health researcher for several years and I never talk about it on my channel or anything like that because I'm not accredited. Um, so I, I feel like, I mean, as much as I've got all these really interesting, I have a lot of really interesting data that's empirical and researched and also anecdotal, but um, that's actually really worked for me and some of the people I've given advice to, but I, I haven't created some videos on this, but that being the basis, the foundation of what I'm about to say, um, I've been constantly trying to fix myself and I've got like, you know, skin issues that get triggered by certain foods and I'm trying to like heal whatever's going on in my digestive tract that's creating that problem or in an autoimmune sense. And um, I've experienced some success and also a lot of struggle. Right now I'm on a very, very limited diet um, because it's, it's something that's very poorly understood by science right now. It's like a, they call it a histamine intolerance. And Basically, I, I mean, it's no wheat, no dairy. I mean, there's more things I can't eat than things that I can without producing a reaction um, on my skin and also digestively too. And it got really bad during my pregnancy and has continued to be a problem. And um, when I breastfeed, it can give my baby um, skin problems too. So she can eat whatever she wants. But if I eat anything off the list, um, then I produce the toxins and then I give her the little toxins through the breast milk. And that's really mm -hmm. frustrating because it's like I get punished and she gets punished um, because breastfeeding is great, but it's also what your body likes to get rid of toxins. Um, so I can't eat things like strawberries and beans, and anything fermented, no vinegars. Like basically I, I eat like meat, potato and rice and I can't eat meat that's more than like 24 hours old after it's cooked. You know, like if there's a lot of freaking rules and thank God I'm a really good cook um, because, um, yeah, I can't eat fish unless it's frozen on the boat 
and um, <laughs> eaten right away after I it's defrosted. Um, like nothing from a can. I mean, the list goes on. Um, on the on the bright side, you think this would help me like lose the pregnancy weight, which I largely have, you know, I've lost mm -hmm. the pregnancy weight. Um, I mean, I still like to fit into certain skinny jeans again, which I'm on my way to doing. I am I'm in the range that I'm comfortable, comfortable with physically. Like I've basically gotten back into shape. I'm pretty happy with my body right now. I mean, I could be happier, but I'm pretty happy. I'm, I'm good. Um, <clears throat> and this diet, um, wasn't even for weight loss. In fact, I've proven to myself that super clean eating you can still gain weight on it. Like, especially if you're breastfeeding, because like, you know, breastfeeding can help you lose weight, but it also can help you gain weight. So I've, I experienced like weight gain, weight, weight loss, weight gain, weight loss. And that's, that's on like a super clean diet, you know, cause mm -hmm. the bottom line is calories and overeating and being tired or whatever. You can overeat super clean food. It's, it doesn't take McDonald's to make you, <laughs> to make you fat. I'm um, not sure. to say that I got fat, but, um, yeah. So, um, I've been working towards some kind of healing. So am I working toward perfection in my body and my skin? Yeah. To me, perfection would be just not having these damn issues where I can't eat like a goddamn strawberry without getting yeah. eczema on my hands, you know, um, or I can't eat a piece of chocolate without my baby getting a problem on her belly, you know, um, just things like that and trying to figure myself out. And so far my current plan of action is to stick on this diet um, and to try to do more cardio because as much as I can walk around town and burn, burn calories if I wanted to, I, I don't think it's the same detox. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I've had more success when I did more cardio and we had less of a problem from, uh, my body was more forgiving Mm -hmm. when I did that. Um, but I feel like it's not, not as forgiving right now. So I'm working toward, toward the perfection of not having these problems, <laughs> but to be anything would be just, just less of a problem would be better. Uh, Progress. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very poorly understood by, by medicine right now. They, they barely even know what to do with it. Um, but the best solution is yeah, eat, eat this. I mean, it's the cleanest eating I've ever done. I mean, I, I, I buy meat from the farmer's market and um, from Whole Foods, grass-fed stuff. And I eat, like, I eat a lot of fatty meat and, you know, organic vegetables and fruits and potato. And, you know, I've, 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 I, I dry my own fruit because dried fruit is very high in histamine because it's old. And so in order for me to eat dried fruit, I have to make it myself. And then I have to put it in the freezer right away so that the histamine doesn't start developing. And it's just, yeah. it's just... It's this long, boring thing that I probably shouldn't keep talking about, but um, but that is something that I've been really struggling with. And may, having success, I mean, like on the bright side, as annoying as this is, I at least have a solution. It's not my favorite solution. You know, I don't like that I can't drink wine and eat chocolate or strawberries or really anything, but you know, at least I have a solution. <laughs> it's there, it just sucks. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, no. it's way better than being covered in scabs. Yeah, so. I think well, I think it's still interesting because you have you have a goal. The goal is to say maybe have a normal body in your terms of normal, right? And you're you have your reasons why you want it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you have all the actions. And the thing is, some people will go through one or two and they give up, and they just say, "This is who I am. This is my body." That we talked about this with the the, the overweight people. In the right. Beginning. But you're yeah. like, no, I'm not willing to accept this. And you're no, like, I'm, I'm going to try this, 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 this. And you just keep going. And you keep, now you start to find you're playing scientist with yourself, which is why I always encourage people to do whether they have, they have a problem or they have like a, they're trying to lose weight or whatever it is. You play scientist. You're like, okay, well, this is not good. This does. This is okay. Good. You just have to be your best health advocate. You need to figure out what's working and not working for your body. And then that will get you closer to progress. But I have a, interesting uh or i have a question i'm interested in mm -hmm. since strawberries themselves tend to be the most pesticide ridden thing that we consume most most of the people that that the things that i have read and seen people say just don't eat strawberries ever no matter what they are mm -hmm. uh, so i don't even i don't even eat strawberries i used to like strawberries um i'm wondering though have you ever gone to like a, a farm and picked a strawberry that's like not been picked too early no, but I should. And as a um, test, I should, and I should let my baby eat it since I cannot, I mean, like it's, yeah, I, I, I hear you about the pesticides and 
uh, I don't even think, yeah, I don't think the histamine thing has to do with pesticides. That's just an extra annoying it's an extra thing. Yeah. It's just an yeah. extra thing. Yeah. Um, like, like I can't eat bananas because they free up histamines. Like they don't have histamines as much as mm -hmm. they just enable other histamines to come out of other places, you know? So it's like all these weird little, rules, yeah. you know, I'm wondering too with, with, with beans, if it's, if you try like beans and lentils and, and green peas, but I'm wondering like if you ever tried to cook, take the dried bean and make beans. Oh yeah. Like soak them overnight and stuff. Yeah. Oh, and even yeah, that I will mean, do like, it. Just I've been into the, all the holistic food yeah. stuff. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a vegetarian type or anything. And not, but I have tried it years ago. I did try the vegetarian yeah. thing years ago. Um, didn't work out for me long -term. Um, But um, I think people who want to minimize, I mean, I, yeah, but uh, I, yeah, I've tried a lot of that. And I mean, I think that the sad thing is about the histamine problem um, as it stands right now mm -hmm. is it eliminates a lot of healthy foods, you know, like I can't do avocado, you know, and I love while I was pregnant, I would just have avocado burritos. I was just like, yeah. I mean, I couldn't do weeks. So I did like corn and I was just like, just lop like a pound of avocado and like roll it up and be like, ah, you know, and I can't That's, do that yeah. anymore. Um, so it is unfortunate. A lot, of, a lot of healthy foods are not on my list, even though they're perfically great and nutrient dense for other people. Sure. It's just, it's just they're a source of histamine. Sure, sure, and sure. To some extent, like even, you know, I, I eat a lot of meat, but meat can be a high source of histamine as well. Like if it's too aged, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's that can be a problem. So I just have to be very careful. Um, right. and there, theoretically, like I've had a holistic doctor tell me this might go away when I stop breastfeeding. I mean, I'm still technically breastfeeding, but there's hardly any, I mean, there's hardly anything in me. Um, and I'm thinking, well, wouldn't it have gotten better by now? But I don't freaking know. No one understands this shit. Yeah. No one knows what to do other than say, well, all we know is um, you should just stay on the diet forever and good luck with that. And I'm just like, Ugh. okay, well for now I'll do that. But then like every so often I'll try something new. And then of course it'll blow up in my face and then I'm back to square one. But you know, sure. I keep keep trying and like i said it's better to have something that sucks be the solution than having none right true you know? and it's also interesting it's also ironic where it's i'm not sure it's a guy doctor but it sounds like a guy doctor where where it'd be like you know uh, i don't know what's going on through with your female body but then guy politicians are like but we want to control it yeah, right. I mean, I yeah. hear that. Although, um, if you want to get political for a quick second, I think that um, the whole like forty week abortions is completely unacceptable. That people should yeah, not that's... be allowed to kill full term babies. I mean, that's yeah. not what pro choice is. The... It's not pro infanticide, you know. So right, I'm, I'm okay not... with men exactly. saying, "Hey, don't kill these babies." I'm like, "Yeah, I don't think they should be killed either." And I have a degree in feminism, you know. But there's unfortunately a lot of my feminist colleagues who are so determined to tout, you know, to, to, to toe the, the line uh, politically that they're just going to be, say yes to anything, the radical No one's willing to accept the, the compromise of anything. Yeah, they don't want to no, compromise. No one's they, willing to accept the middle ground of anything. It's extreme one way or extreme the other way. And I'm like, guys- Always in the media, yeah. Yeah. In the media, it is. I yeah. feel like a lot of a lot of us quiet. A lot of people are quiet in the middle. I think the vast majority of people are quietly moderate. Um, and they, but but I, what I've noticed in a lot of my feminist academic friends, as reasonable as they can be, like if the radical left comes out with some batshit new idea, it's like they automatically agree with it because, well, you know, we're all we're all liberal, so I've got to agree with all this batshit stuff that this person, this new professor, came up with. You know, it's like no, 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 like. You, you don't kill 40 week old babies, you know, right, you don't, right. you know, you don't, you don't eliminate the word vagina because it's not inclusive enough. You know, you don't like, you know, like cultural appropriation is this new thing. And, um, well, uh, that used to be called multiculturalism and that used to be a good thing that we were embracing everyone's culture. It used to be a good thing that everyone kind of like sampled each other's foods and cultures and hairstyles and dress. And now, and now you're being called racist. If, if you like do anything that isn't within your race it's like mm -hmm. that's so oppressive but anyway like i could go on it's um i don't know how i launched into this you may want to cut this part out of the video i totally wouldn't be offended if you <laughs> okay yeah well i'll be offended if i cut it out okay but now i probably cut it out okay go ahead cut cool. it out cut. Be really cool cool well anyways thank you so much julia for uh for being on the podcast thank you for uh taking your time Absolutely. And um, you take care and I look forward to, uh, to seeing how it turns out. Sweet. <laughs> All right. You have a good one.